So back to our factors that affect cardiac output. And we're actually going to jump over to heart rate before we go back to stroke volume. So we've done this, how end diastolic volume affects preload to affect the force of contraction. Now we are going to um, do heart rate. And to do this, you're going to remember what you know about pacemaker cells, that spontaneous depolarization and referring back to right that pacemaker potential. So let's actually start by looking at that. This is your normal um, heart rate. And remember those that slope that is due to depolarization, I'm trying to get the right size here, of um, that pacemaker potential. So, and this happens spontaneously as the action potential um, ends and the cell repolarizes, the funny channels open up in response to hyperpolarization. So hyperpolarization opens up the channels again, causing depolarization. Hyperpolarization causes depolarization. Depolarization causes the action potential full depolarization um, and on and on. This happens without any nervous system input. However, the autonomic nervous system can also affect this. So the sympathetic nervous system, as you already know, increases heart rate. The vagus nervous system decreases heart rate. So by what they say is increased sympathetic nervous system is going to increase heart rate. Increased vagal stimulation is going to decrease heart rate. And maybe it doesn't look like that's what's shown here, but it is. What's changing here is the slope of that depolarization. So a sympathetic nervous system is going to make this slope steeper, increase slope. The parasympathetic nervous system, vagus nerve is going to make that slope less steep, more shallow, decrease the slope. And that's how we're going to affect heart rate, changing the slope of the pacemaker potential, the rising phase of the, um, before we reach the threshold of the action potential. So let's look at this first with the parasympathetic nervous system. So going into how this happens, how would you make that slope less steep than it is beforehand. First, what part of the brain is going to control this? This is going to be controlled by the adrenal medulla. And so this is our, I'm, I'm sorry, not the adrenal medulla, eh, medulla oblongata in the brainstem. So this is the brainstem. This, these are nuclei right here. So bundles of cell bodies. This one in blue here is a parasympathetic, because it can control the parasympathetic nervous system. This is called our cardio inhibitory center. That name kind of makes sense, right? And actually, I think I have that pop up here. Yep, there it is. Cardio inhibitory center is just a region in the medulla oblongata. Is that erased? Let's write this again. Medulla oblongata, not the adrenal medulla. Medulla can mean the middle of something. Um, in this case, it, it's part of the brainstem, um, but it doesn't mean like the inside opposed to the cortex. So this inhibitory center is going to ultimately innervate the SA node to alter heart rate. It's going to do this through a presynaptic and postsynaptic um, a post preganglion and postganglion neuron, that's going to look um, like this. So what is this guy? This is our vagus nerve, cranial nerve 10. And that here is our preganglionic neuron and our postganglionic neuron. Remember that um, ganglia is very close to the target tissue for the parasympathetic nervous system. Of course, you remember that. What are these two things? So this would be the ganglia right here. Here's ganglia. What are those other two bumps that I have on the heart itself? Those are the nodes. 
So both the SA node and the AV node are contacted by this parasympathetic nervous system. Um, it's going to slow down, right, the firing at both of these nodes. This one's a primary one that kind of makes things sense to, to think of. It's, it's faster to start with. Um, it's the one that's controlling heart rate when it's functioning. How does this work? Well, what is released from right here? Acetylcholine. This image is a little similar to what I've, I've drawn before. Um, a little bit nicer picture. Acetylcholine is released from right here and binds to muscarinic receptors. M2 is muscarinic. These receptors are located within the heart cells. Um, right, the cardiomyocytes, including here, we're looking at pacemaker cells. And we're just looking at this right now. So the action of ACH on muscarinic effect receptors somehow slows the heart rate. And this is stimulated by this cardio inhibitory center in the medulla. Anything that does this, so like ACH, is going to be called, I'll say this more than once, we'll say it here, a chronotrope. Chronotropic is referring to something that alters, um, sorry, negative, something that alters heart rate and ACH is negatively um, influencing heart rate, it's decreasing heart rate, so it's a negative chronotrope. Okay, let's look at this. Here is a normal resting heart rate. You should be able to state, you know, what's causing each of these changes in membrane potential. Funny currents opening here, funny channels causing a funny current. Parasympathetic nervous system is going to decrease the slope. make it less steep. It's going to do that by binding to its receptor. A muscarinic receptor is a G protein coupled receptor. You know already that G protein coupled receptors are going to turn off and on other enzymes through camp signaling. Off and on have various metabolic effects. This happens in various cell types but in the heart tissue, so cardiac muscle, um, let's pacemaker ourselves, let's just be more specific. It's gonna cause the opening of potassium channels. That's one of the effects of the activation of these other enzymes and pathways, indirect ion channel opening. Opening of potassium channel, potassium channels, that's going to cause potassium to flow out. That's going to slow depolarization. It's going to counteract the sodium in occurring here. Sodium in is what depolarizes the cell during the action potential. If you have potassium going out more than you did before, you're gonna have hyperpolarized cell and a slower um, time to reach threshold. The potassium is counteracting that sodium movement because they're moving in opposite directions and they're both, both positively charged. You don't need to um, know this structure here, but this is a nice visual that kind of shows um, one specific mechanism for the opening of the pot potassium channels. So this is our muscarinic receptor, same one that's shown here, and activating a G protein, just like down there. That G protein can cause the opening of a potassium channel. When I say opening a potassium channel, that's a membrane protein, right? So here, potassium flows out, causing hyperpolarization and a slower um, ability, slower slope to reach threshold. 
so altered slope. That's how we decrease heart rate with the parasympathetic nervous system. Do sympathetic next, I'll do it in a separate video.